And now to Africa, a continent with 58 countries and 1.2 billion people. But just how linked up are they? Less than a third of Africans have internet access, most of them in South Africa, Kenya and Nigeria. In 2015, there were 226 million registered smartphone SIM cards. However, that number is set to triple by 2020. And that's influencing urban hipsters in their choice of work. Cape Town's waterfront is prime real estate and a perfect location for a business. That's what the founders of She Leads Africa thought and set up their internet platform to help young African women achieve their professional dreams. It organizes workshops and events across Africa on networking, drawing up business plans and marketing and PR strategies. This weekend, Tokomia is running a workshop on programming for young entrepreneurs. Computer science and software design are still very much male-dominated fields. So science, technology, engineering and maths are extremely important because um, in Africa, and I think it's a phenomenon around the world, women often are told, um, you know, you would be better at something else. Um, and that's why we, um, we focus on technology and entrepreneurship, um, getting people and especially women in Africa involved in tech and getting them involved in um, entrepreneurship activities, getting them involved in key areas where they could be industry leaders. Tokomia works for Girl Hype, a non-profit organization that aims to get more women into STEM subjects. Her mother founded Girl Hype 12 years ago. The biggest challenge is investments. Um, getting investments, getting endorsements, getting sponsorships. I think African women really need to come in with a sense of leadership, um, come in with a sense of ownership, come in with, this is me, this is what I do, and I'm capable. Um, it's not a, it's not, it, you know, leave the beggar mentality at home. You don't need to beg when you're here. Really um, bring you and your leadership. Some of today's participants already run their own websites. Niaki Chebangu has an online platform that promotes natural hair. Users can buy products, discuss tips for hair care, and find out about services and events taking place. She's familiar with the challenges facing female entrepreneurs. Um, access to, to government funding, access to private sector funding, you know, not being bold enough to go into companies and say, you should hire me, or I need to be working here, or you need to listen to me. I think that's possibly the biggest um, challenge with women in South Africa, particularly. Mish Atagana is head of communications and public affairs at Google South Africa. She's confident that digital technology will continue to create jobs. She also hopes it will allow African businesses to forge their own path. I think we're so obsessed with skill because that's what the world of entrepreneurship and the West has taught us to believe in. When you think about it, if I employ three people and one person leaves my business because they're equipped enough to start their own business and then they employ another three people and one person leaves to that business to go employ another three people, when that happens at a scale of 10,000, is that not scaling? The new opportunities aren't restricted to the digital world. Job creation is a priority in every sector. There's only so much jobs creating apps can, can, can give, but if you can build a farm that allows Africans to produce and sell their own food, you've created not just so many jobs, but you've fed so many people. Here in Cape Town, the digital future has arrived, and women are very much part of it.